Well, greetings again. We are back at it. There's been a lot to consider and think about lately in life, and just a lot of, you know, crazy life that we live. So, here we are, continuing for, through 1 Peter. And I just want to jump into this one here. It's 1 Peter 1, 17 through 19. And remembering that in the last Driving Thoughts episode, we thought we looked at being holy, and because God is holy and the standards of that holiness and all of that. And so after that, Peter says this, And if you address as Father the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, he's going to judge us according to what we do, live out the time of your temporary residence here in reverence. You know that from your ancestors you were ransomed, not by perishable things like silver or gold, but by precious blood like that of an unblemished and spotless lamb, namely Christ. So, our works are looked at and judged by God the Father. And there is no partiality in there. It is utterly based off of his standards, his standard of holiness, which is what we just talked about, and again, in the previous one. And he's going to judge us based off of what we do. Now again, as believers, as this letter is written to, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And so, those judgments do carry weight, but at the same time, it is not a judgment of being cast out of his presence because of our sin. It is a judgment of the work we do. And so that should lead us to, again, in this temporary residence, this temporary fleshly body we have as aliens within this culture, we should live that out in reverence, in fear of the Lord, not in fear of man or what man might do to us or what the culture says about us. And as a basically foundational fundamental Christian, however you want to word things, someone who believes that scripture is true. And there are a lot of things in the culture today, especially in America, that fly in the face of what scripture says, despite what people might say that scripture does say. Um, you know, like, believe in things like only two genders. Um, homosexuality is not the sexual lifestyle that God has intended for us. Um, these things, abortion is wrong. These types of things that are culturally accepted, but biblically against the character and nature of being created in God's image. And so as we struggle through these things, again, not saying that um, I, I live a perfect life whatsoever, though, again, that call towards God's holiness is not about what, what I think is holy or good, but it's his standards. And I fall short of those standards quite often. And again, it's only by the grace of God covered by the blood of Jesus that I can even have these conversations with people or even read the scripture without condemning myself. But we are to live this life we have that is temporary, short-lived, um, with reverence, with fear, knowing that Christ is all there is. And it's easy to get distracted by life. But we should know this by, again, uh, from the past, you know, and we we were ransomed, again, not not by so Old Testament. There, you, you are ransomed, if you will, by the sacrifices, the sacrificial system. Uh, you could ransom your nation to another nation by paying out of the treasury of your nation, so that you could be free again. And that's you know that's how ransoms work. But the the ransom that was paid for us was not with anything that is short-lived. It's not with perishable things like gold or silver, which are considered valuable in our world still, but they they too will eventually fade and are nothing. But we were bought, we were ransomed with the precious blood of an unblemished spotless lamb who is Jesus Christ. We are only made holy because the only one who was holy died in our place and paid that ransom for us. So we are really putting on his holiness, right? We, we are putting on his righteousness. It's been imparted to us. And, it, um, and that is the only thing we have to hold to. Everything else fades and dies and doesn't last. So if we have this unblemished, spotless lamb, Christ, who has died in our place for us, why are we not living out our life in reverent fear for his glory and not for 
seeking ourselves first. With that, why do I daily choose stupid things? Why do I daily choose selfish things? Why do I daily choose to put my hope in the things that will die? Why do I put my hope in the things that will not last? And these questions are as much for everyone listening as they are for myself as I just go about thinking of my daily life and how I don't even live up to these standards. I, I don't live in reverent fear of the Lord. I live in fear of not having what I think I deserve. And that puts you in a spot as you live a Christian life of really just being called a hypocrite. And quite honestly, we are. We are all a bunch of hypocrites. But as you go forward, thinking about these verses, again, there, there's the hope in Christ. There's the hope of the power of the Holy Spirit in us that empowers us to live in a holy manner based off of God's standards, not our own. So do a self-check. What are, what, why are you making the choices you're making? Why are you living for what you're living for? And if those don't line up with Scripture, what is it that you need to do differently? So I encourage you to take a look. Intros, personal introspective of who you are as a person. Um, and go and read these verses yourself for a little bit. And we'll, we will catch up as we finish up the rest of First Peter in the coming episodes here. So thanks again for joining. Appreciate everybody. Have a wonderful day.